Hey team, Maddie 231 here. E55 today, I am giving the air compressor a little service for the airmatic suspension and I am replacing the valve block as well for the airmatic just because I have a few fault codes um, and hey, the car's done 175,000 Ks so why not, you know, let's give it a refresh. So I'm not gonna go and step by step on how to do this but I'm just giving you a little bit of a education on what I find and what I go through. I'm just a DIY mechanic so um, hey, I might not do everything perfectly but um, hope you find this useful because I can't find anything else on replacing the valve block on an E55 211. I look a bit, uh, look a bit shit but that's all good. Um, it's about the car, not me, so we'll get into it. So what we're gonna do first, get the car up on all fours and we're gonna use my um, Foxwell OBD scanner tool thingy to let the compression out of the suspension system. It's a little air out of the whole um, airmatic system. So it's, there's no pressure in it. Then we're gonna get into um, pulling out the compressor. So I'm not replacing the compressor. I'm just simply servicing it with this little kit here I bought on eBay. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it myself, but let's give it a go. So there's some filter media, there's new bolts, there's a new little piston ring because the piston rings can wear out on the compressor, which means they run longer and they don't give enough air supply to the pneumatic system. Um, and then I've got a brand new valve block that I bought off eBay because they're horrendously expensive here in New Zealand. Um, brand new genuine obviously, I always buy genuine or OEM, but this one is genuine because it's quite an important piece of equipment. Whereas the little pneumatic air filter is a OEM man one, it's not the genuine one, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. So let's jump in and we'll get her on all fours and I'll come back in a sec. Cool, let's lift her up. So quickly guys, make sure when you're lifting it up, you put it into, um, set the suspension to up, up mode. That's the technical term for it, I think. System connects to the module computer for that, for Rheumatic. Then in this case, I'm gonna to go to active test. We'll, we'll also just read the um, error codes as well. So we, that's what we're gonna do soon. We're not gonna do that right now, because that would be bad. We're gonna go in um, front axle, rear axle, raise and lower. So I'm going to lift both up a bit. So you can see there's the current heights or values. Now the rear axle air control is is for the full rear axle in one system, uh, in one linkage, for example. Whereas the front, you've got both left and right are independently adjustable. Whereas the rear axle, yeah, is just one solid axle. So make sure we push the right one so the car doesn't sit on its arrows. In fact, off the top of my head, actually, I think we're supposed to turn that off when we're playing with suspension. So guys, we've got the uh, Foxwell plugged in, and we're going to lift the car up a bit so I can um, so I can jack it on all fours. You don't have to lift it, but I like to just to give me a bit of extra extra room. Generally, if you jack the car, you lift it up off there. That's what I do on my E550, but because the E55 is slightly lower, I like to manually raise it as high as I can. Nearly as high as I can. So three, raising of the suspension on the front axle. So I'm gonna push three. You'll see the values start to change up the top there, guys. And the car is starting to raise. Yep, so you can see those values. Right front, left, right front, uh, left front, left. So the car is lifting itself up. actually see, you probably can't see it on the video, but the camber of the vehicle starting to get more positive camber as you raise it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to raise it any higher because the back now is going to be out of proportion. So I'm going to go and lift the, um, what's raising the rear axle. Okay, so that's number five. So I'll scroll to number five already on there. So we'll lift the rear axle up. 
All right, team, she's in the air, she's on all fours. Lifted her up, she's on the stand, so taking the wheel off. So what we're gonna do first is start with the uh, fender liner. So we're gonna rip all these little um, rivets out. One's here. Um, there's missing one there, actually. Like I've got some brand new ones I'll put on. Um, and down here as well, we've got some bolts that retain it. So let's get this off and let's see what's behind let's, it. Um, at the same time, release pressure from the central reservoir. So I'll hold down F1. You can maybe hear it. Yep. We're losing all our air pressure. Team. So we've got um, the fender liner off, right? So here's our valve block. She's only a little, a little valve block right there. If you see the valve block in my S600, it's like the size of this pump, <laughs> like a big hydraulic, like a tractor. Um, anyway, so yeah, we've got our pneumatic here. We've got our lines that run to the back our axle back reservoir. Um, and we've also got our lines that run to the um, the the left and right strut, and we've also got the one that connects to the actual compressor. So we're going to pull the negatives off um, and then take the sucker out. So guys, we've got the um, air compressor out. Right, it's on the ground over there. Um, so what I did was first off I. Um, unplug these two connectors here that plug into the compressor that faces this way then I slowly undid the the intake into the valve lock the, in, the inlet for the valve air valve um, I'm throwing this valve lock away or getting rid of it so I don't yeah normally you should plug these holes up but yeah hey it's not that dusty or anything here so we should be right um, and then I slid the the uh, air filter sits on here, so I've slid that off. That's here, so I'm going to slide this old one out and then put my brand new one in over here. Mount that back in so it's good to go when I've finished the compressor. But next we'll do the compressor and then finally we'll swap the valve block over and put it all back together. Righto team, so we've got the compressor out. I've got it on the uh, on the old desk and I've got a YouTube video up. Look, how to bloody... Um how to repair a Webco air compressor, look at that. See, I'm no expert, I just look at online as like you guys are. Anyway, so I've done done these two bolts. I haven't looked at this thing yet. It's a genuine Mercedes-Benz uh, Webco air compressor. I assume it's a original, the original one from 2004. I can't see an actual date stamp on this, like a build date stamp. But, hey, actually, is that the build stamp there? Uh, 2004, week 13? Well, it could be actually because this car was a April 2004 build so that actually could be the stamp there if that is then that means that the this is the original pump these bolts the pump itself actually is in very good condition because here in New Zealand in Auckland we don't really get so we don't get snow and salt roads or anything like that um, and this car was from Japan too as, as I should mention so um, yeah so guys while I was separating the head from the piston uh, the cylinder as such I was trying to get these out now so just a quick pro tip that I've just learned on YouTube myself passing it on don't try and pry this out with a screwdriver what you do is you actually push that little grey ring in push it in and then pull this out same on this one here push that in you can't see it on the video really but that see that pushes in push this piece in and then pull that out gently. Um, I just left that part, I haven't touched that side. So let's get this undone. Right guys, so yeah, I've pulled those out. So you can see here, that's the little cap there. That's the other one. And this just slides off it. Okay, so I'll put that aside. Making a mess in the office with all my bloody black hands. <laughs> and we've undone the head, so let's pull this sucker off um, and see what it looks like underneath. Oh, shite. Okay, no, we're all good, we're all good, yep. Everything's all good. So let's shift that aside. Yeah, I'm gonna clean it all up. Right, here's our piston. And here's our piston ring on it. You can just see it there. So we're gonna replace this. It actually looks bloody good to me. It doesn't look wrong with that. 
Um, I assume in the top of here is the cylinder, is the bore, and that's where it where it works, does its magic. So, um, I, I'm, I'm sure it's nothing as complicated as an actual car's engine cylinder, but regardless, this wears out over time, and I imagine when it wears, the um, the compression of the piston is reduced, therefore the pressure that it can, or the air supply that it can give is reduced. So let's swap this out and move on. Cool guys, so I've put a new, um, a new piston ring on. So this one, interesting enough, I don't know if you guys experienced the same when you do your one, but it's a little more, got more play in it. Like it doesn't, it's not as contracted, it's a little more open, which I assume is good, because this one's more compressed, so perhaps when it's in the bore here, like actually if you just see, there's a little bit of play um, when it's in this bore, which I've now cleaned out. It's not too bad, it's pretty tight, but there's a little bit of play, so um, I'm picking this one's gonna be a bit tighter fitting which is obviously what we want, so there's a better seal. Um, you can see it's like a normal sort of motor. It's got a connecting rod, and then it connects to the actual electric motor, which will have a, um, a bit of a crankshaft with an offset uh, piston connector that helps it go up and down. But um, yeah, so I've cleaned up the head on this. I've given this a bit of a wipe. Apparently, you don't really need to do much to it. It's not too bad. I might just give it another quick clean, and then I'll... Um, reseal this but first if I put this aside the motor aside which is heavy leave that there bring this guy over here and lose one of my zip ties yep there I actually don't think we even need the zip ties to be honest I think they're just there if we need them we only need one o-ring so this is the o-ring that fits this one I thought you needed both but you only need one so that goes there before I do that though I'm gonna replace the filter media we'll see how dirty it is so I've, I'm assuming it's um, under here within this thing here. So we're gonna unbolt these and take that off and replace it. Cool. So I've pulled off the nuts that hold this assembly together. Um, and now we're gonna have a look inside here and see, well, we'll just see what the hell's in there for a start. Let's do that. I just wanna be careful I don't drop anything. Yeah, here we go. Look at, look at this, look at this. Oh. Now I, I actually don't wanna get any weight on that pneumatic line because I'm gonna break it. So I'm just gonna very carefully separate this while I'm doing it on camera and dedicate it to you guys here. So we've got a spring. Let me let me pull this right, all. So I've out. separated this from the um from the head. Right. Um and yeah at the moment it's like full of like rice bubbles or um like quinoa or something. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it is. It looks looks like some sort of food that you're gonna boil and eat, but I won't do that in this video. The, um, there's the old filter, look at that, weird, eh? So it's got like black, I guess that's where it's been, um, that's where all of the quinoa's been pushing against it, and then that's the little disc that sits on top that goes between the spring uh, and that. So that's our old one, I'm gonna buff that. That's quite cool actually, it's like a bit of art. And we're gonna empty this guy into this bag here. It's my bunch of crap, my quinoa, I'm gonna get rid of the quinoa and put it into the bag. Empty that. Yeah, I've already spilled it on the floor, which is good. Cool, so that's all the old stuff, which is a lot more than, oh, the new bag doesn't have as much in it. That's the new bag. <laughs> so guys, I've emptied the quinoa out, um, thrown it in the bin. Now I've got this fresh, whatever this is, same sort of, this one looks like caviar. So we'll ch fill this back up with caviar, we'll put a new, um, new filter in. So there's two, one goes at the bottom, which I've already put in there. Then we put our caviar in. Then we put the uh, next one in. Then we put our um, little Art, artwork die here. Can't do this with two hands because they've taped it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So let's get this iPhone on a wide zoom so you can see what I've done. Here's my... Um, WIS Mercedes how to that I didn't I printed out that I didn't even look at which is not good always read the manual and so yeah we'll fill it up Quite like I better watch with my actual eyes while I do this so I don't screw it up look at that beautiful oh it actually does fill it right up okay oh that was interesting because I thought 
Look at that. Look at that caviar. Sorry, it's a bit dry now, isn't it? Um, this is literally an air dryer, though, so... Right, that's there. Cool, so now we chuck this guy on. There we go. This is fun. This is real simple work. This is easy work, unlike flipping, pulling control arms off or trying to undo seized bolts. This is fun. Cool, there we go. That guy's there. Then this fella went on top. This little plastic thing that looks like it's had seen better days. Cool, so I've stuck that there. What I'm just going to do is just tip it upside down because I don't know if we want anything in this hole here. So, nothing's come out. That's good. Okay. Nothing's come out of that hole, so that's fine. One for good luck. Oh, one came out. That might be the quinoa though because it's black as. That's fine. So, Cool, we've done that. We put this rusty old spring back in. I just assume we just chuck it on like that and bob your uncle. What I'm going to do is just quickly clean this and reassemble it. And then I'm going to put the whole thing back together and we're going to be good to go and put it back into the car. Good afternoon. Um, a few hours later, so I've, I've redone the compressor as we've just gone through. I've hooked it back up again, hanging um, on these little like rubber, cool little jiggly rubber thingies. <laughs> that absorb obviously a lot of the noise. So here's the old valve block guys. Um, I'm gonna plug it up ASAP just to keep any dust out of it. But I'm getting rid of this anyway. Someone wants to buy it on here in New Zealand for a couple of bucks. So, cause it still works. But anyway, um, and here's our lines. Not really wanting to just keep them sitting there like that. But um, so I'm gonna get the new valve block in ASAP so I don't have all these lines sitting there open. Um, and we yeah, get us good to go. So let's get that fitted. Guys, <laughs> everything's back together. It's not too hard. So if you're gonna do this yourself, like, yeah, I'm pretty, I'd say I'm like a pro noob at mechanic stuff. Like I'm good at the base level. Um, so, and this was pretty easy on, compared to a lot of things I've done on this car and other cars. So just be gentle with these, cause they're, I don't know if they're brittle or not, but they don't look, they look old. <laughs> so just be careful when you tighten these up. And these, the torque on these are two Newton meters. So it's bugger all, like, I just hand tighten them. Um, literally to, like, when they hit the metal there, they just get real hard straight away. So I just pretty much got it up to that and just gave it a little bit of, a little bit more of a turn, just very gently, and that was it, left it. Um, furthermore, plugged the, um, plugs in. These are a bit brittle as well. I've re uh, zip tied them. Um, and down here, reattach this. Again, two newton meters. Two or three, I think it is. Um, and then I've re-bolted this onto the top as well, so it's on its bracket. So what we're going to do now is turn the car on. Um, see what happens. <laughs> see what, uh, we're going to check the, um, when we turn the car on, we'll check the automatic pressure. Because I think when we first were videoed earlier in this video, you would have seen it was at like 10 bar or something. So we'll turn it on and see what it does when we start it. Um, but if it repressurizes to normal, I'll well, we'll just we'll, we'll just put everything back together again. But I do want to listen for any leaks first as well. Okay, guys. So battery's in. Car's not turned on yet, but I've plugged. Pl whoop, dropped the camera. Plugged her in. Ready to go. Uh, read the codes. We'll just check if there's any codes. Cool, that's good, no codes, so the system's off the bat, got no code issues. We'll go to, uh, what do we do? I actually don't know, what do we do? Full suspension struts, full central reservoir, how about we just do that for now? I don't know if the car needs to be on, but we'll just do that. Okay, so see here the current pneumatic pressure? We'll fill her up. Okay, we've started it, F1. Cool, okay. Oh shit. <laughs> so look at the pressure, the, the pressure going down again. Let's just run it again. Okay, so it is actually working. That's good. Right, so what we'll do, because see the pressure is holding. It's when we're depressurizing it, the pressure was like going to like say three bar, and then it would go back up to like three point eight. Same thing here. Oops, I keep getting confused. 
So if we, hopefully at this time it should stay over one bar. Hopefully. Cool, 1.5 bar, good. Okay, so that's working. So the WIS, the manual, uh, you know, the workshop manual says get it up to five bar before um, lowering the car down, but I might just start it up and let it do its own thing, to be honest. Just to, just to let it pressurize itself, because all the struts need to be filled up and everything, so um, I think we'll just let the car, while it's in the air, regain its um, pressure. So we'll start her up and we'll go have a listen. So if we go to live data, pressure sensor values, and then airmatic pressure, we'll just let it refill itself up. So we'll go see if the, the valve block or anything's making any noise. So there's the compressor there. It's actually not running at all. Test guys on it. She's running there. Actually, pretty quiet. I'd like to think it's slightly quieter than before I had this done, which is good. It is blowing this out. Um, it needs to get 14 bar within 40 seconds, and like within five seconds, it hit 14 bar. I remember testing this car earlier on when I bought it, and it took like Oh, I don't even, I think it got to 14 bar, but it took like 30 or 40 seconds. So that piston ring must have fixed, must help a lot. Uh, must, and, you know, the compression must be a lot better now, so hopefully we're all good to go. Hey guys, she's all back together and working mint so far, so that's good. So basically, um, I put air into each strut, into the main reservoir. Crikey, look at my hair, Jesus into the main reservoir, into the struts, and then I slowly lowered the back of the car down first, and then I lowered the front down very slowly just to make sure that there's pressure in those struts. The back had pressure in it straight away, whereas the front, as I lowered it on the jack, it nearly started to touch the jack, so I stopped it. So don't drop the car straight away onto its just straight flat, because it'll if it's got no air in it, it'll smash onto your, lip, onto your jack, and it's not good per Mercedes um, guidelines to lower the car fully when it's got no air in the system. So use your jack to sort of just progressively lower it until it stands on its own feet. I cycled the height button a few times. So, you know, we raise the car up, I just cycled that. Um, and as you can see now, the car's fine. The car's good as gold. So in summary, yeah, just, just take your time. You need one of those diagnosing tools like a Star or my one's a Foxwell NT530, I think. Something like that, so you can depressurize the system and then something so you can refill it and check that the um, you know the, the central reservoir's got the right amount of pressure in it. I think we started at like 11 bar. Um, it was around six when I refilled it and when I pressure tested it, it filled up real fast. And that pump's quieter now, so if you've got an Ematic Mercedes, hey, you could go and buy a new Webco pump and I'd love to, I'd do that if I just had that extra money, but I. I do, I can go and do it if I want, but I think, hey, let's give it a go, Fifty, you know, $30 rebuild kit, and it's straight away working better. Anyway, guys, that's Matty231 with a video on compressor rebuild and valve block replacement. If you want more of these videos, please subscribe to me. Uh, you know, if, I, if, if you guys like the videos, then I'm happy to make more of them. And, yeah, let me know what you would like to see next. Cheers.